absolutely amazing, aren't they? The time, effort and commitment these guys put in to watching our beloved Stoke City just never ceases to amaze me. But are they still your beloved Stoke City? I mean, how do you feel the season's gone so far? Um, initially promising, uh, a few splutters along the last few games, uh, major concern defending away at St Andrews. Um, however, I'm hoping that we saw enough bright sparks in the first handful of games to hopefully say that maybe we can survive in the Premier League with maybe uh, you know the more pleasing football on the eye that uh, you know that the, 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 the powers that be at the club and the fans seem to want. You talk about surviving. Is that what you think Stoke in the Premier League is all about? I mean, Pulis used to say that all the time. Tony Pulis used to say mm. it's about 40 points. Do you think we'll always be looking that way at the Premier League? I think. In the long term, no. Initially, yes, bearing in mind, uh, personally in my view, I think is a huge change in playing style. I think it's brought about what you've seen the last few blips. Um, but as, as Terry commented here earlier this evening, you've got several of the large teams with new managers that are going through large changes as well. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, why not in the, in the future we can have our cake and eat it, we can have this style and be more than competitive, but I think we are at a very transitional stage at the moment. Uh, and on the, on the very short term, uh, Premier League survival, I would be happy with. Longer term, next three or four seasons, I'd be hoping for more than that. And they call uh, t top ten. Well, you've talked about the Norwegians. They're holding their, one, their own 150th year celebrations here and at the ground tomorrow. What, yeah. what do you think have been the best memories for you in the 150 years? I know you haven't seen them all, but in the few years you've seen one of the best games uh, what I attended as a 14-year-old uh, was at the old Victoria ground, the classic Stoke 4, Luton 4. Uh, a young, I'm sorry mate, extremely acne, 16-year-old Paul Walsh was playing for Luton. It must have been one of his formative seasons and I just remember... Um, uh, well, similar to and same score line as the Birmingham match in the week, but far more um, going on in the Stoke 4, Luton 4. I mean, we, it was the days when you had one sub on the bench. We got Derek Park in the right back in goal. It was the 89th minute of something stupid. It was 4 all, and David Moss took a, a penalty for Luton, and we were devastated at certainly losing 5 4. And he hit the post, and from the resultant draw, we celebrated like we'd won the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, you haven't said why Park in in goal. That's the famous match when Peter Fox got sent off, isn't it, for coming out? And I do game. believe the first ever player to fall foul of the professional rule, the professional foul rule. Yes. I remember him being in tears on match of the day that night, yeah. saying Spence he's quitting. Saying, that's right. That's it. Play, uh, that's probably one of my favourite all-time Stoke goals. Uh, sorry, Stoke matches. Um, also, um, you know. Uh, I think one of the ones which stands in memory for me was when Manchester City in the current era uh, two or three seasons ago in the Premier League started pouring Arab money in as a ridiculous way and we beat them 1-0 with 10 men James and Beattie. James Beattie header at the far post and we didn't score until we got 10 men against a, a multi in, in that's it a multi-billionaire Arab side uh, that was no mean feat I thought um, and I also seriously enjoyed the uh, um, the season just gone, the home 3-1 victory against Liverpool on Boxing Day. Uh, you know, beating the big teams is unbelievable. Uh, putting three past them was virtually unheard of. So uh, those are probably my favourite three. You talked about that particular match, the the time when we beat Jane, we beat Man City with James Beatty's header, and with about 15 minutes to go, I remember a tremendous roar going around the ground. Hmm. Not scripted. It was just we all realised the players were out on the feet and. And we dragged them over the line. And again, mm. at Boxing Day, when we beat Liverpool, mm. uh, how well the crowd responded. What's happened to the crowd this year? I don't know what it is. I agree with you there, Ange. I don't know what has, uh, has set in. Uh, is it that maybe comes across every team that manages to stay in the Premier League, having not been in there before for a few seasons? Is it just human nature that not just for Stoke City, but for any club that's maybe in Stoke City's position, it becomes expected? And you know, are the fans getting into a mindset of well, let's just turn up? Um, it does worry me a bit because, you know, in the formative Premier League years for Stoke City, as you'll know yourself, the, the crowd at home was massive. Just look at the home and the away results in comparison. Um, I do hope we get it back, but I don't know. 
uh, you know, even you know, drawing with the big teams in the formative Premier League years was like unbelievable. You know, if we draw with the big team now, you'd probably get, oh, we might have beaten them, mightn't we? You know, um, so I think that's why. But I hope we don't don't lose too much of it. Well, you've always been a family of Stokies. You have a little girl yourself, Phoebe. Little Phoebe. What, is she five, six? Now? Just turned six. Is she a Stoke fan? Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Red and white striped blood like a dad. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Pleasure, Angela. Thank you.